We're going to demonstrate the silver scale test in this part of the examination. The silver scale test is the way of assessing contracture of the heel cord. The heel cord is a, a term that we use loosely to describe the gastrocnemius and soleus as they connect through the Achilles tendon to the heel. The Achilles tendon either both muscles or only the gastrocnemius, may be contracted along with foot deformities. And it's often the contracture of the heel cord, one or both portions, that contribute to pain in foot deformities, whereas the foot deformities on their own may not cause that much pain or disability. We need to assess which is tight, and if surgery is required, lengthen only the one muscle or two that's contracted. To do this exam, we need to recognize that the gastrocnemius starts above the knee and the soleus starts below the knee. Though they combine and they end together in a single Achilles tendon, the position of the knee when we're performing this test is critical. We also need to appreciate that the ankle joint dorsiflexes and plantar flexes and the subtalar joint dorsiflexes and plantar flexes. It dorsiflexes as a component of valgus eversion and it plantar flexes as a component of varus inversion. When we're performing the silver scale test, we're trying to isolate the one joint, the ankle joint, to determine whether it can dorsiflex and plantar flex. To do that, we need to eliminate any dorsiflexion or plantar flexion through the, through the subtalar joint. To do that, with my left hand, I am inverting and everting the subtalar joint. That's inversion varus. That's eversion valgus. I need, with my thumb on the tail and the navicular joint, to neutralize or so-called lock the subtalar joint. In a flat foot, that would be by inverting until I feel that the tail and navicular joint is aligned. And in a varus foot, it would be by everting until my thumb demonstrates that the tail and navicular joint is aligned or so-called locked. Now, maintaining subtalar neutral and locked any up or down ankle, any up or down motion is occurring at the ankle joint, and that's what we need to know. So, with this hand, I neutral subtalar joint, maintaining alignment at the tail and navicular joint as a proxy for the subtalar joint, and then I flex the knee to relax the gastrocnemius. Now, the dorsiflexion that we see is demonstrates the flexibility of the soleus. The gastrocnemius has been relaxed above the knee. Subtalar joint has been neutralized, and this 15 degrees of dorsiflexion between the lateral border of the foot, not the medial, but the lateral border of the foot and the tibia, demonstrates that the soleus is not contracted. It would not ever need to be lengthened, even if we were performing a foot reconstruction. Now, maintaining that subtalar neutral with the thumb on the tail and the joint, we try to maintain dorsiflexion at the ankle while extending the knee and tightening the gastroc at this end. Now, the gastrocnemius allows only about five or six degrees of dorsiflexion, subtalar neutral, knee extended. And the difference between six degrees of pure ankle dorsiflexion and 15 degrees is the contracture of the gastrocnemius. If, Xander, we're having foot reconstruction for one reason or another, we would say that he would perhaps need lengthening of the gastrocnemius alone by a stray or vulpius procedure, but we would not want to lengthen his Achilles tendon because the soleus is not contracted. On the other hand, if he lacked dorsiflexion with knee extended and he still lacked dorsiflexion with the knee flexed, that would be an indication to lengthen the entire Achilles tendon because both the soleus and the gastrocnemius are contracted.